I caught the FOMO bug. Why did I buy this? Let's get into it. Another week, another list, another comic book added to the collection where I'm going, why did I spend my money on this? Hit the like, slap the subscribe. Jem, how you feeling? I'm feeling the FOMO bug too, man. Like Deadpool comes out with this trailer. He's teasing Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine. I want Hulk 181s. I want New Mutants 98s. I want Wolverine 88s, which is number 10 on the list of the honorable mentions. There are technically three different versions of this book, two of which are considered deluxe versions, better print quality. Stores had an opportunity to buy one of those for a little bit more money or a cheaper print quality, the non-deluxe. It doesn't say deluxe on the comic book. And they ended up spending way more money on the deluxe versions, making there be way more prevalent than the former. There are 269 deluxe versions graded at a 9.8 on the census. However, I did say there was a third version, and that was the newsstand deluxe, and we have a 9.6 that sold this past week. The deluxe newsstand edition has no prior sales record, but the 9.6 sold for $300, everybody wanting that first comic book battle between Wolverine and Deadpool. The deluxe 9.6 sells for under $250, so even at a 9.6, the newsstand is getting a kicker, which is unique, by the way. The deluxe edition has a total census count of 1,097 on the census versus the direct edition, the worst paper quality, which has 386. And and that is the FOMO bug I bit this week. I bought this 9.6 non-deluxe edition, hoping that with a crack and a re-slab, put a press in between it, that I can get a 9.8. Be careful with that press because it is lesser of the page quality. Marvel tried to tell you when they sold it. Now, a CGC 9.8 of the deluxe edition has been selling from the $450 to $600 range. A CGC 9.8 of the regular edition, the direct edition, only had two sales this month. October 1st, where it sold for 800, and October 8th, where it sold for 660. I think most people don't know about the various editions because people didn't care about this book until recently post Hugh Jackman announcement. And moving over to number nine on the list, nine books that are left to be chatted about, but there are many more found on the best comic app in existence. The runner's up list is compiled of many more books than we bring to the mic. Isn't that right, Jen? That's right. This week, there were over 20 books on the runners up. We picked our favorite 10. Remember to use code TOM101 to get a free two-week subscription to the app. Support the show. And looking at the list at number nine, we have Fantastic Four 49, the first full appearance of Galactus, the first cover, and second appearance of The Silver Surfer. And... I always look up this census count just in case it changes, but a lot of people don't realize how scarce of a book this is. At a 9.8, there's a lonely two copies that exist. But when you look at the 48, what do you find, Jem? 39 copies of FF48 graded at a 9.8, and somebody wanted to get this copy so bad that they purchased an incomplete 0.5 copy. Now, what's interesting about that, there are 51 copies of a 0.5 on the census, and this time they spent $400, which is 50% above its record-breaking sale of 266 back in September. Now, there's a total of 4,663 slabs currently on the census for FF49. Members are getting this graded regardless of the condition it's in with Galactus' inevitable inbound. But we got to see Dr. Doom first, so I think there may be time to invest on this Fantastic Four key. Next up the list at number eight, Dragon's Lair number one, the variant. Now, although it debuted in 2003, this is an arcade game from the 80s that was featured in Stranger Things Season 2, Gem, you are the arcade master. Well, I appreciate that. I am in the Gemcade right now, and I do have a collection of arcade one-ups, but what you'll notice that's missing is the most recent Dragon's Lair that they came out with. This game was a little bit before my time. It was more like an interactive movie. I didn't really grow up playing it, but I do respect the fact that there are so many diehard fans. And it's funny to see this comic from 2003 show up on the runners up. Limited to 1,000 copies. This 9.0 came to market this week, last selling in April for 125, up 140% now selling for $300. There's a lonely 23 copies graded on the census, three at a 9.8, and only two recorded sales of which, one in March for 964, and another in August for 850. People be specking on their video games. People be specking on the first appearance of video games and comics, of beloved cartoons, even Universal Studios and Disney rides. Moving on to number seven, we have Star Wars issue number four, the second printing. 
This is the second print of the first appearance in comic books of Sana Solo, who is actually Sana Staros, but says that she is married illegitimately to Han Solo in the pages of the comics, bridging Dr. Aphra, Luke, Princess Leia, the whole crew during the Jason Aaron run. Now, the 9.8 sold for an increase of 994% this week, last selling in 2016 for $32, now selling this week for $350 after the announcement that she was slated to get her own solo series. Long overdue. And there is a lonely 11 copies graded at 9.8 on the census. So kind of tricky with the first appearances of this character. This is definitely the first appearance. She has dialogue, but she has a headdress covering her face. It wouldn't be until issue six where we reveal the face and she's introduced as Han Solo's wife. This was such a landmark moment back then that members have specced on both comic books. We're not even talking about a cameo versus full appearance. We're talking about a first appearance versus full appearance because of the impact in story and not only that, collectors have doubled down. Both books are selling for the same amounts. Curious. Selling about the same, it seems like the market's having a tough time trying to decide what the true first appearance is. Issue number six was actually number one on the trending video last week, so make sure to go and check that as we jump into number six on this list, which I kind of foreshadowed with the first appearance of cartoon characters. We have Four Color, issue 29 from 1943. This is a classic Donald Duck story called Donald Duck and the Mummy's Ring by Carl Barks. This is hilarious. They're literally searching inside of sarcophaguses. There's dead bodies that they're looking around hunting for treasure to entertain children. I digress. We have a 1.8 last selling in December for 450. This classic book had an uptick of 78% in value selling this month for 800. $800 for a 1.8. Imagine if something mid-grade came to market. Especially because there's so few that exist. There's only one 9.0, and that's the highest grade that exists on the census. Last selling in 2008 for 17925 Hot damn. You got to have some Scrooge McDuck type of money to afford this book. But what's even more odd is that an 8.5 in November of 2017 sold for the same exact amount, $17,925. The curse of the mummy persists. At the list at number five, we have Avengers 45. This is when Hercules joins the Avengers. Don't you remember that he was introduced this year? I feel like a lot of people forgot. That's right. We got Hercules in the post credit scene of Thor Love and Thunder. So you know they plan to do something with the character in the future. And we have a 9.6 that broke record, selling for $660 back in the comic boom of 2021, up 77%, now selling for $1,169, breaking the four-figure mark. That post credit scene made a few investors happy. The 9.8, only three copies exist, and the last time it sold was back in September 2021 for $1,800. Imagine what a 9.8 would go for in this market now that a 9.6 is trending just $600 cheaper. Next at the list, at number four, is Batman 63, the first appearance of the Killer Moth, who's an adversary of Batman who wants to do everything he can to take down Batman to be the exact opposite of a hero that Bruce Wayne is. But also, this is a horrendously tough book. Yeah, a tough book. There are only 78 copies on the CGC census. We have three copies in a 7.0, one in a 7.5, two in an 8.0, and only one in a 9.0. That single 9.0 has only sold twice, and it sold twice within five months of each other. The first time was in June 2020 for 8,900, and the second was in November 2020 for 8,700. The last 8.0, which is only two of, sold for $4,532 this year. And this was all during the excitement of the Batgirl movie that has since been shelved. Recently killed off in the pages of Batgirls in issue 11, seemingly, and rumored to show up in the Noonan's animated series. A lot going on with Killer Moth. Killer Moth, Kite Man, what a great time to be alive. A 2.0, last selling in 2020 for 135, an increase of 548%, an all new high of $875. Can I get a hot damn in the comment section? Sticking with Batman comics from the golden age, number three on the list, we have Batman 41 from 1947, the first time we get a science fiction inspired cover on the title. 
Now, this wasn't the first time we had a science fiction tale on the pages of Batman. It happened prior in Batman 10 with the Isle that time forgot. It happened again with Batman 24. It happened in Rome. And it also happened in Batman 26, the year 3000. We have aliens on the cover. We have Batman and Robin taking off and as a police force going intergalactic. Call them the Green Lanterns. So not the first time they've dabbled with science fiction, but the first time that it debuted on the cover. And we have a CGC 7.5 that came to market and broke record. It sold for $728 back in 2017. It's up 119%, now selling for $1,591. There's 182 slabs that exist on the census. There's only one copy graded at a 9.8. Has never sold publicly. Two copies graded at a 9.6. One sold this year in April for $4,560. Next at the list. At number two, we have Adventure Into Fear number 11. You think we're not going to talk about Man Thing on the trending Hot 10 or Runners Up? And this one's a triple key because not only is it the first mention of the nexus of all realities, we know that Man Thing is a nexus being, shoot, so is Scarlet Witch in the MCU, but it's also the first appearance of Jennifer Kale and of Thog. Man Thing's Swamp is also a nexus, making this a prime positioning for this character to aid in the traveling between multiverses. Multiverse, I, I digress. We have a 9.6 that sold for 960 in January, up 108% this week, now selling for a clean $2,000. Hot damn. 103 total graded on the CGC census. There's one 3.0, 12 9.2s, 16 9.4s, 13 9.6s, and a lonely 3 graded at 9.8. One recorded sale of a 9.8, and it sold this year in June for $8,050. If you enjoy what we do, you want to support the show directly, join the November Mystery Mail Call. We've announced two exclusives, one per box. The first, we got Power Rangers 1. Oh, one. Greta Lusky doing a Rita Repulsa cover for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. We got trade dress. We got Virgin going out at random. But the second guaranteed exclusive, one per box, is a trade dress Batman Beyond number one done by Gabriel Del Otto. We have at the list at number one, Tales of Suspense 39, the first appearance of Tony Stark debuting in 1963. We're talking about the debut of Iron Man's Model 1 armor. We have the first appearance of Iron Man. Not sure if this is any speculation on Iron Man returning to the MCU, maybe recasted in another form. Does it have anything to do with Ironheart? Or is it somebody just trying to get an entry-level blue chip Marvel key? It's the second one that we've had on this list, a CGC.5, which sold for $1,500 back in 2018, breaking record with this sale of $4,200. That's an increase of 180%. We do have only one copy graded at a 9.8, has never been sold publicly. There are five 9.6s. Three have sold publicly all in the same year, 2013. One for 249,000, one for 275,000, and another for 262,000. The last time a 9.4 sold, which there's only 20 copies that exist, was in 2020. I'm looking for a recent sale to report on, Comic Fam. And when it did sell, it sold for $99,000. We appreciate your time today. As always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Jem, where are we headed this weekend? You know we're headed to Maryland for Baltimore Comic Con 2022. Jem's gonna be there, Mill Geek Comics, Jeff the Golden Age Guru, Nerdy Girl's gonna be there, Nomas Comics as well as Carnivore. Come join the fun on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles. It's called Whatnot, available for both Androids and iPhones. Dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. You know we're bringing the exclusives. You know we got the giveaways and we also have two other videos for you to enjoy. We made them for you. Have a great week.